Hi, welcome to today's joint webinar from NXP and Toradex about new NXP i.mx6 ULL SOC and the Toradex Colibri iMX6 ULL system on module. Before we get started, a few organizational things. So at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A. So please use the question field in the webinar tool to ask questions. And you can do that while we present, and then we will just pick that up at the end and answer them. Then also that webinar will be available as a recording at the end. So you will get the email with the recording, and then you can also share that with your coworkers and so on. Okay, so let's get started. First, short overview about what we will uh, talk today. So it's myself, so uh, just uh, who I am. My name is Daniel Lang, and I work for Toradex in the Seattle office in the US. And I be joined by uh, Mario Centeno. He joins from Austin, from NXP, and he will uh, focus on the SOC. So here, rough for you, first explanation or introduction to the SOC, then we talk about the, the system on module, and then comes really the interactive part. So you will be able to vote for your dream system on module configuration. We will do a short poll, and then we will a short talk about the onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then at the end, you will see what's actually required to get started. And we have a short demo how the out-of-the-box experience uh, will be if you get uh, your own IMX6 ULL system on module. With that, I'd like to hand over the controls to Mario from NXP, and he gets started with it. OK, um, thank you, Daniel. Hopefully you can see my screen. This is Mario Centeno. I'm with the product marketing team in Austin, and uh, my focus is on the low power i.mx portfolio. And I'll explain a little bit what that means. So when Daniel and I started talking about this webinar and the new product that Toradex is bringing to market, we thought it would be a good idea to give you an overview of uh, i.mx in general, and then do a little bit of a deeper dive on the i.mx6 ULL, which the new SOM is based off of. In terms of i.mx, it's been around in the market since the mid or beginning of 2000s, and we've seen a lot of adoption happen over the years. And this slide says that we've shipped over 350 million units to date. But when we add 2017, when we close the year out and add that to this chart, we're going to be well over 400 million units shipped to date. The, the customer base has gone from several hundred, you know, five, six years ago to well over 4,000 individual uh, customers for this product line. So we're really happy about the product and how it's performing and, and really happy with uh, partners that are helping us, you know, expand the, this product to the market. One of the things that I will also point out is that for uh, i.mx, you know, longevity is a very important for us. We have a longevity program for these devices. For consumer and industrial, it's automatically 10 years from when a product is uh, brought to market. And for automotive, it's 15 years. So we believe in the longevity of these products, and we have never uh, in the life any of these products. So I think that's important for yourself and company and partners like Toradex who are you know, supporting many different customers and want to make sure that they're in the market for a long time. I'll jump to the next slide and give you a little insight into where we are seeing success for this product. I.MX today is number one in auto infotainment and number one in e-readers. So if you are um, familiar with uh, the customer base around that, you'll, you'll see that uh, these products are probably in your lives on a daily basis. And um, outside of those two areas, there's vast adoption in consumer and industrial segments, in particular, you know, in the home, in, in applications like thermostat or in medical applications, anywhere where you would see a display, there is um, more than likely an i.mx behind that. So very wide uh, adoption and, and very wide uh, use case among, amongst those three segments. The i.mx 6 series uh, started off originally with uh, six families. We have since expanded that to 11 families. The ones in the far right are in the box here are the latest additions to the portfolio. 
The six series has anywhere from you know quad devices or uh, core devices, and all the way to single core devices. The iDynamic 6 SLL was announced uh, last year, and it's the latest Cortex A9 within the portfolio. So, anything from the 6 SLL to the right of that is a uh, Cortex A9. The two devices on the left here, iDynamic 6 Ultra Light and the iDynamic 6 ULL, which Tortix is using for their latest uh, system on module, are Cortex A7 based. So. Um, these are the first Cortex A7s within the series and, and really taking advantage of that lower power uh, core that ARM has uh, in the market. You'll see that there's uh, pin for pin compatibility. That's the uh, key for this portfolio and for the customers that, that we work with. Um, we want to give you guys the, the flexibility to, you know, move along this uh, series based on the performance, the power, um, and cost and price point that you, that you might be trying to hit. And then this is all underlined with the software compatibility. So you'll see that there's a, a common software, uh, Linux uh, BSP framework that is, is uh, compatible between the iDatamx6 ULL on the far left and all the way to the right to the iDatamx6 Quad Plus. I'll jump uh, to the next slide and um, talk a little bit about, I mentioned that I was uh, Part of the low power i.mx team and really what that means is this intersection here where the high-end mcus and entry-level application processors intersect and that's where uh, you'll see the focus of the i.mx 6 ull uh, which this uh, new uh, system on module is based on and a newly introduced product that was announced in october the i.mx rt and then as you move to the far right on this green arrow, you'll find uh, other iDotomix uh, products that are either focused on voice or, or graphics or, or advanced graphics um, within uh, the portfolio. A couple of things about the 6 ULL. We had a, a couple of items uh, in mind when we created the, the product. We really wanted to um, to move to the Cortex A7 to take advantage of that uh, power savings that, that you see from moving from a Cortex A9 to a Cortex A7. We have two different packages and I'll, I'll give you a little bit more details about that in a sec. And then there's a, a flexible, multiple boot options uh, on the device. So really trying to maximize the power efficiency of the device. We wanted it to be cost effective and easy to use. So um, it is the, the lowest priced uh, um, iDotum X6 in the portfolio, and uh, I would say it's probably the one of the lowest priced uh, Cortex uh, A's that is out in the market today. And then by easy to use, we wanted to make sure that we um, had a compatible and scalable story with the software and uh, other devices within the iDotum X6 series. With that, let me go into the next slide. So a little bit more details uh, about the iDotum X6 uh, ULL. So it's a Cortex A7. There's uh, two different packages offered. It's uh, one is a 14 by 14 millimeter uh, 0.8, sorry, 0.8 millimeter pitch package. The other one is a nine by 9.5 millimeter pitch package, both in the map BGA design. And then we offer uh, two temperature ranges. One is an industrial temp, which is uh, minus 40 to 105 and, and uh, consumer grade temp range, which is uh, zero to 95 C. Uh, we do uh, offer the product up to 900 megahertz, and I'll show you that in a sec, uh, the different product offerings that we have here. We have 32 uh, kilobytes of in instruction cache and uh, 32 kilobytes of data cache uh, on board, as well as uh, 128K of uh, L2 cache uh, on the device. In terms of the multimedia, there's um, different IP there for uh, camera sensor inter interfaces, LCD interfaces, and we have a, a graphics in, uh, acceleration engine called the PXP that allows you to you know, resize images, combine them, and, and rotate them. So um, very basic uh, uh, graphics engine, but, but useful. In terms of uh, external memory, there's the ability to connect to North Flash. There's a Quad Spy um, interface as well. And then we do support LPDDR2 as well as DDR3 as well on this device. On the connectivity side, we have uh, MMC and SDIO interfaces, actually two of them on board. We have uh, two Ethernets and then two USBs. We have uh, a partially integrated um, power uh, uh, PMEC 
with the, with the LD, LDO and the temperature monitor on the device. And in terms of security, we have the high assurance boot and um, some uh, cryptography as well and, and um, available on the device. Let me jump to the next slide. So uh, within the i.mx6 uh, ULL, there are three different uh, variants. In total, there's about 10 different part numbers when you add the different packages and different temperature ranges and speeds. But for the most part, when you look at the family, you can see it as three different pillars, devices. One is the i.mx6 Y0, which is uh, on the far left, which is the base, most basic uh, version of the device. It's the entry level point of the product family running at 528 megahertz. There's no uh, graphics uh, um, or multimedia IP on this device. And then as you move to the right, to the Y1 and the Y2, we add uh, more and more features in it. Eventually when you get the y to the Y2 is the full feature set device of the 6 ULL. So the Y1 uh, is still in the 528 uh, megahertz in terms of performance. Uh, we do add a, a couple more timers uh, on the device. Uh, we still uh, do not have the multimedia IP on there, but to get, we do add um, the second uh, USB um, uh, on this version. And as you move to the Y2, this is the full feature set part. We have uh, different variants in the 528 megahertz, 800 megahertz and 900 uh, megahertz are offered on here. And then this is where we uh, enable all the different features within the family. So we add the, the PXP, the camera and LCD uh, interfaces to this device. So all in all, there's uh, 10 different uh, variants and, and really giving you the flexibility to you know, if you're working on a platform, really uh, pick and choose what devices you need for that particular uh, application and then give you that flexibility. And then um, before I hand it over to, to da back to Daniel, um, I do want to say that um, Tardex is one of our, our main partners. Um, we feel like they're very well aligned uh, with NXP. They're a, a global organization and they have support in all the major regions that, that we participate in. We have a lot of experience with them and we've been, um, they've been an early access partner with many of our, our MPIs. And in particular, one that's coming up is the i.mx8 uh, product line that's coming up. So they're an early access partner. So I would encourage you to work with them or reach out to them if you're interested in the i.mx um, product. With that, Daniel, I will hand it back to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Mario, and also uh, for the introduction uh, of Toradex. Um, uh, also, I mean, from our side, uh, as Mario mentioned, uh, it really aligns the value and what NXP does and uh, what Toradex does. Uh, NXP is the main provider of the SOC uh, for our uh, system on module. Uh, we really like the quality and long term availability that that really um, aligns with what our customer needs, with Toradex customers, their industrial automation, medical, uh, test and measurement, uh, avionics, um, and some automotive, uh, and so on. So that's uh, that's very uh, nice together. Um, uh, before we uh, talk about the product, i like to give you a very brief overview about the Toradex company, just in case you're not familiar with that. Uh, so Toradex, what we do, our main product is a system on module, a computer modules. Uh, all of them are ARM based. Uh, what's special about these uh, modules is that we try to keep them really pin compatible. We have two families and within that we put a lot of effort to make sure uh, you can upgrade and downgrade. Uh, then we have in-house uh, hardware and software development. That means our hardware and software uh, teams talk together. I also like to point out that we even we sell hardware, but our software development team is about 10 times bigger than, than our uh, hardware team. And that's really where we put a lot of uh, or for the value we generate um, and so on is actually in, in, in the software. Uh, I've mentioned at least 10 year uh, product life cycle and um, many times we even, we even can do uh, more here. If you get our module, if you buy the system on modules, you get a free uh, support. Uh, we have community, uh, we have a big developer site, but uh, you can also reach us uh, via phone or, or email and, uh, and the support is, is included. So there's no, no extra cost um, to do that. And the idea is really that the, the OS, as we say, 
we support that this is like a production quality that it can take that and and put it in a medical device we also we don't have the illusion to generate a hundred percent bug free a code but if you find a bug or if there is an issue uh, you can let us know and we will uh, take care of it uh, we have a large partner ecosystem so nxp of course has their own partner system where uh, toradex is is, is, a, is a is part of but then toradex has their own ecosystem we have a couple of of uh, different partners. So the first uh, partners, they're creating off-the-shelf carrier boards. So uh, most of our customers, they use our computer modules and they build their own carrier board. But Toradex provides a, a few off-the-shelf, but we have partners, they really uh, provide their own uh, off-the-shelf carrier board. So you don't have to build uh, your one, you can just buy uh, one of that. Then the second kind of partner is they, they provide software and added value on top of our module. So a big one is Qt, uh, the C++ UI framework, or uh, Codesys with Soft PLC, or Crank, another UI framework, and, and many of them which really optimize their software for our module. We make sure there's a good uh, out-of-the-box experience. So if you need a Soft PLC, you can, can use Codesys, and you know that's already tested with real-time patch and so on. And the last kind of partner we have is basically system integrator. So they can do carrier board uh, for you. They can help you with software, uh, with your end application, or uh, they, some of them have even manufacturing capabilities uh, for your carrier board. Then we have direct sales. So we really like to be close to the customer. So if you have any problems or stuff you, uh, uh, you like, you can tell us directly. There is no uh, guy between uh, filtering that out. And as you can see here on the map, uh, we have a global reach, uh, so we can uh, support you in all these places. Uh, we, have, we have engineers there. Uh, also, if you have engineering in one part of the world and maybe manufacturing somewhere else, we can even uh, support uh, these, these scenarios. So uh, let's uh, dive into the product. So one uh, topic is really how the ULL fits with, with other uh, products uh, from, from NXP. Uh, and so first, what we have here is, again, the overview of our pink compatible family. So the first uh, on top there is our Polis. That's our higher performance, higher end uh, module. It uses an MXM edge connector. And for example, the i.mx8 quad max uh, will be released in, in that form factor. That's where Toradex is, is early access. Uh, we also have the iMix 6 quad, uh, for example, in that form factor. Um, and then on the bottom, you have the Colibri family, and that's really where the, uh, the iMix 6 ULL is part. The Colibri family is or, already uh, quite um, around, it's proven, it's there since 2005, and you can see there's a lot of module. And, and really, we take the idea, which also NXP has, to provide several versions of chips with the same pinout, so it's easy uh, up and downgrade. We really take that a step further, and now you really can up and downgrade even over family. So you can switch from an IMX7 to an IMX6, uh, to an IMX6 ULL or, or Vibrate, and that you can all interchange them. So that makes you future-proof. That all also allow you scale. So in case you're not 100% sure how much performance you need, you, you can do that down the road, or you can have several products uh, in several uh, performance um, ranges. So that's very important uh, for Toradex. All eyes when talking about uh, uh, pin compatibility, I like to point out our uh, pinout designer uh, tool, so that that's a free tool, and it really helps you with uh, a pin assignment. So as I said, they're pin compatible. However, all these uh, SOCs, they have on all their pins, they normally have many different functions, five or, or sometimes more, and Toradex pin compatibility that's designed for uh, one pinout. If you want to use another one or special functionality of a certain SOC, uh, you can do that, of course, but you may lose uh, compatibility with, with some of the Colibri family product. And this here really points that out. So, for example, an example is CAN. So, CAN is officially not a, a compatible feature on the Colibri. It's on a polis. There, we even have two CAN ports, but on the Colibri, that's not uh, one of these always compatible feature but basically all of the nxp socs have it so you can say if you use an nxp soc you can say i want to use can and then you 
immediately see if you lose uh, compatibility with, with some of our module or what's the trade-off and so on. Also, if you want to use a lot of interfaces from a certain kind, uh, you could see if you may lose another interface somewhere else. So this is very, very useful. I think everybody of you who tried to do that, maybe with Excel and things like that, uh, it's quite messy. So we, also, we didn't have that since the beginning, but uh, that makes it very easy also for us to review um, layouts from customers, but also for customers to, to do their initial design. Uh, yeah, so here a closer look how it exactly fits into the lineup uh, of some of our uh, NXP-based uh, SOMs. Uh, on the right side, you really see our high-end uh, IMX6 uh, modules for the Colibri uh, with a multi-core Cortex-A9, a, a lot of memory. And then on the bottom, you see that IT logo that means industrial temperature, so means that uh, version is available. Uh, with a temperature uh, larger than zero to, to 70, so typically seven, uh, minus 40 to plus 85. And then the logos on the bottom is the oper uh, supported operating system. So you can see Linux is supported for all module and Windows CE was also supported. So that Windows logo is Windows CE uh, six, uh, 7 in 2013. And you can see that was uh, supported for most module. That's now a change for the ULL that we will not uh, support it by default. If you really have a need for that, uh, let us know. We can still uh, do it on demand. Uh, and we will still keep a Windows C team uh, around for quite a while because all of our other products. So that's an uh, option. But we will not do that uh, by, um, uh, by default. And um, performance-wise, it's really where the ULL uh, fit. It's above the, the, the VF50, but it's not as strong as an IMX uh, as, uh, 7 or, or, or 6, uh, of course. Uh, we run already some benchmarks and did some, some tests. And it's about what you would expect uh, in some load case where cache is a big impact. You can see the, the large cache from the IMX7 uh, compared with the IMX6 uh, ULL. And then, of course, also point out the, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth of the of one of the ULL uh, versions uh, we have there. Uh, other thing uh, saying here, Tordex really doesn't allow our customer in normal case to do all the configuration. Uh, so some system on module provider, you really can say how much RAM flash, if you want to have Wi-Fi, how many uh, USB you want, how many Ethernet, and so on. So Toradex, uh, we provide a, a couple of, of different uh, versions, but we don't do all the configurations. The reason is really quality. So even small changes can have impact on, on your product. It can have side effect. It can, uh, yeah, it, it can lead to issues. Uh, that's just uh, how the world is. Uh, and that always needs a very, very deep testing. And because we only have a limited number of versions, we can do very in-deep testing. And also most of the customer use then one of these versions. So there is a lot of different customer on, on each version. And many of these medical and automotive and, and uh, industrial uh, customers do really in-deep testing by themselves. If they find anything, uh, they report it uh, back to us. Uh, we can fix it. And then you get this uh, very well-tested product. So for the ULL, we have currently two versions. Uh, uh, the one you see here, uh, they are available until 2028. Uh, but uh, we think there would be uh, space for, for one more. And for that, we have really the next kind of interactive part uh, of, of that one, uh, of that presentation, except of the Q&A at the end, where you can actually vote for your uh, dream configuration. So please keep in mind that uh, as more memory as you need, as, as a faster chip, that will have impact on, on the price. So just choose what, what you think. Uh, but we really start now, and I will ask you all this question, and there's a pop-up, and, and then you can uh, vote uh, what, what you think, and then we will use that uh, to probably define another uh, version of the IMX6 uh, ULL. So first, let's get started with the, uh, with the RAM. So you should see a pop-up, and you can say how, how much RAM uh, you, you like in your uh, new product. So the current version, uh, maybe about RAM, uh, short as people uh, fill that out. Uh, we have a single level flash 
on the i.mx6 uh, ULL. Okay, so I will uh, run the RAM question for a few seconds more. So please cast your vote and then we go on uh, for the next. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. I will close that and we start here with how much uh, flash uh, you require. As mentioned, all our models have onboard uh, flash, uh, single level raw end on the, on the IMX6 ULL and the one with a little bit lower RAM for the one which have very uh, high high flash, sorry, like the, the IMX6 where you have like four gigabytes there we use industrial grade EMMC. And then of course you have an SD card uh, too where you can extend. So please cast your vote. I will uh, close that here in a, in a couple seconds. How much flash memory you like on, on this uh, ULL chip. Next, the CPU speed. Uh, so as Mario pointed out, there are a, a couple of uh, different uh, versions. We, we use actually the Y2, uh, the, the full, the most featured one uh, for all, all this SKU, but even there uh, you have different uh, versions uh, in speed. Uh, so let us know what, what you need. If you really need just the low end or, or if you really look for, for a higher end uh, model. Okay, few seconds left here. Okay, thank you. I will uh, close that vote now. So the, the next questions are just yes or no. Uh, very simple. Do you, do you require, require Wi-Fi? Uh, yes or no, that should be very simple and, uh, and fast. Last, last five seconds to vote. Okay, thank you. Close that. Uh, next is about Bluetooth. Do you like to have Bluetooth or do you need Bluetooth? Actually, is the question. I need, of course, the, the one uh, version already has that, uh, but still let us know what you really need. Okay, a few seconds left here. Thanks a lot. Then uh, moving on, uh, if you need an SD card external, uh, that's maybe a little bit strange question. It has to do with the internal, uh, how we can hook up uh, stuff. Uh, so it would be, would be interesting uh, if you need an external SD card additionally uh, to the internal memory. Of course, SD card can also use uh, to connect other peripheral is SDIO interface. Okay, a few seconds left and then we can move on. Thank you. And the last question is about temperature range. Uh, so do you need industrial temperature? Uh, so with Wi-Fi, that's actually for us minus 30 to plus 85, for example, to Wi-Fi is minus 40 uh, to plus 85, or are you okay with the, with the consumer grade uh, zero to 70 uh, degree? Okay, uh, a few seconds and then we can, we can move on here. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much uh, for uh, voting that. I hope it it's also a little bit fun that not just we talk here, that you also can do uh, uh, something uh, while listening to the webinar. Uh, so let's short talk about the, the Wi-Fi and the, the Bluetooth of the module. Uh, so first about the Wi-Fi. Um, so Toradex still uh, recommends for many use cases to use external uh, Wi-Fi on your carrier board. That's what we uh, recommended uh, for many years, and I still think that's a good solution. Uh, however, the onboard Wi-Fi really has uh, some advantages, especially the ease of use, which I really uh, point out. So we really included the fully integrated uh, AC solution on the module. So everything is on there. It's already certified uh, for uh, the uh, North America, so US, Canada, uh, and Europe. Uh, that also includes different antennas. So, I mean, that's important if you look at Wi-Fi solution and you don't want to certify everything by yourself and uh, make sure there's uh, some antennas included. Uh, here I have two of the options um, on the picture here. So like a PCB's a skinny antenna, you can stick on and then kind of the traditional external antenna, uh, deep hole antenna. For you, it really simplifies the design. There is no external components required. I mean, except antenna, uh, of course, and there is actually a small uh, coax cable you can connect uh, to the module. And then also it really simplifies your maintenance. So Toradex takes care of the driver or if there's any change of the module itself, uh, you don't need to worry. Uh, Toradex fixes that if there's driver adjustment required because there's maybe a change on the module, uh, we will take care of that. We also were very careful 
to choose a solution where you have mainline drivers. So even you don't use the Yocto Linux that Toradex promotes, you can actually get that in, in mainline, so you can use uh, other Linux distribution and uh, support is simple. Then a little bit uh, deeper about the feature. So we choose really a future-proofed wallboard uh, AC module. So that's really kind of the, the latest uh, um, available uh, solution. So even the latest uh, routers or other devices you maybe have, even very new, uh, this, this will work well. Um, but it's backwards compatible with the with all the systems. So you don't need to worry that because you have the newest, it doesn't work with the old Wi-Fi infrastructure or anything. Uh, it's dual band. So we support the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, the 2.4, uh, that's what's used uh, originally by Wi-Fi, but it's also used by other technologies for example, Bluetooth and others. So it's many times very crowded and it's not uncommon to see problems. So you can use the, the five gigahertz band too. Then we also, when we implemented the whole thing, we really kept power management in mind. So you can switch off the Wi-Fi module. You could wake up the, the main uh, Toradex module, uh, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all separate. So we really uh, took care that you can also realize a low power uh, use cases. Then the chip we actually use here, the Marvel 88W8887 uh, chipset, uh, if you're interested in, in that. Uh, then what we support, what kind of modes, so it can be an access point or a client, or you can do both at the same time. So to, to talk a little bit about uh, how that looks, so client mode is what your cell phone normally is, you connect to a hotspot, uh, uh, to a router, and I guess that's the most common mode, and then access this point mode would be in your cell phone when you uh, when you put it at a hotspot um, or your router and normally run, runs in, in that mode. Uh, but what's also very interesting is you can actually do both at the same time. So you can be a, an access point maybe for IoT devices if you're in an IoT gateway and, and all the devices connect to you. But then the uplink, you, you don't need to do over wired Ethernet. You can actually also use uh, a Wi-Fi and and then connect so to, to another device. And we already have a request for that where very customers really do that. So one is a vehicle driving around in a, in a city uh, to some cleaning, and then it's a client, uh, so it, it gets data uh, from the net. But if it's in the garage, it's actually a, 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 an access point. Uh, then the temperature module, uh, the temperature range from minus uh, 30 to plus 85 on the module. Then Bluetooth ease of use basically exactly the same, the first point. So I will not uh, dig into it. Uh, maybe what I like to mention is like coexistent with Wi-Fi uh, on a single antenna. So if, if you do everything by yourself, you really need to take care of that. Uh, we already uh, take care of that. Uh, here, a special feature. It's also 4.2, uh, one of the newer uh, Bluetooth uh, standard. It, it supports low energy. Uh, it's compatible with classics of so traditional uh, Bluetooth and new ones. So it's called uh, Bluetooth Smart Ready. And so you can do both low energy and classic. And then we also uh, uh, support the, these new IoT capabilities, uh, which basically allows if you in an IoT gateway, it allows devices uh, which use Bluetooth to connect uh, to the internet. It really makes that a Bluetooth to internet uh, connection uh, much, much easier and, and we shall fully uh, support that. Now uh, let's talk about uh, how, uh, how to get started if you really want to get uh, a ULL. So what you need is a module. Uh, you, you need some kind of carrier board here uh, showing our Esther, which has uh, with some Arduino uh, headers for if you want to evaluate a sensor or something. Uh, that's easy for development. And then you, you need some kind of screen. Uh, we provide the off-the-shelf screen, but you can also uh, use a regular uh, monitor. Uh, so I will show that uh, short on our website here. Let me show, show you here our uh, main website. And you can go to uh, Colibri modules. And then here you see all the, the pin compatible modules. And if you check uh, Dynamic 6 ULL, you can actually just buy it. It's really an online store. Uh, you see the lower one is already available, and then the one with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, it's coming up in the couple next week. And then you can also get a carrier board, and then that's it. You buy it, and then you're ready. And then on the technical side, 
I go here to our uh, developer website and here we have something very nice now it's called step by step guide so if you buy any of our module uh, you can get a fully customized uh, instruction uh, on your module you use you can choose the module and then you can also say that the carrier board uh, for example here the Esther and then when you start that you really see step by step it's like online learning it really steps you through uh, and, and explains everything in, in, in quite the detail, uh, how to connect it, uh, uh, then also how to install the software, uh, how to do the, the part on your host computer, how to set up Linux, uh, and then really how, up to a hello world, so Eclipse installation and everything. E even if you're not very familiar with Linux and, and, and that, I mean, that's a very good start uh, to, to get you started on there. And, and uh, so that's, I think it's, it's pretty cool. I, I'm not very Linux guy. I come from the Windows world, but I don't have any problems to, to follow these instructions. Uh, okay, so now uh, see that live, how that works. And here I also like to point out, uh, I will have a video uh, how really the, the out of the box experience is, but I also like to uh, point out here the default software we install. It's called Toradex Easy Installer, and it allows you to choose the, the operating system you like to install. For the ULL, it's just uh, a, a Linux at the moment, and it will automatically download it from, from the internet. Or it can also download to a, to a USB stick, but so you're always sure you have the latest. And we even will allow our partner like Qt or Codesys or, or Crank um, and so on to provide their own demo images via that. Or we also have partner for QNX or, or Android and so on. You will also be able to, to install uh, that via that, uh, via this uh, Torx installer. It also has function for uh, production programming. So we also, we, we don't we not just support you for uh, evaluation and proof of concept or anything. Also, if you do volume production, uh, this has some nice features to really simplify your uh, volume production uh, process. Um, so with that said, let me uh, show you how, how the out of the box experience actually looks. So yeah, I got here an Esther board with the Arduino and Raspberry Pi headers. And on the back, uh, you can insert the, the Colibri module. It also has JTAG. Uh, here's you see an Arduino uh, board would be uh, clicked on there. Uh, here, that's uh, our new capacity seven inch uh, touch, which directly connects there. So you don't need any additional power cable or anything. You, you can just uh, connect that. Uh, here is the module, how you get it from, if you order it, it comes in that blister. Uh, and then you can insert it in, in the Esther board here in, in this case uh, on the back. I just plug it in. Uh, uh, click it in and then today we will use a regular uh, monitor and a USB keyboard with a, with a touchpad so it's connected via USB uh, then old school analog uh, connection uh, connection to the internet uh, via Ethernet and actually the USB we use to power uh, this, this system so that's also convenient that's also the debug part uh, we don't need that to get started uh, but uh, down the road uh, but so you can debug and provide power uh, via, via the same uh, port. So boot up uh, at the beginning is a little bit uh, slow, but you can see here it boot up into Toradex Easy Installer. On the bottom, uh, you can see some uh, information uh, about the system. And here the operating systems which are available, either Toradex Easy Installer by themselves or uh, the, the, the Linux here. You can also so use a USB stick uh, instead if you don't have internet connection. So we select one here and then it starts inst installation. So it really goes to, the, to our server and downloads it and writes it to the flash. Um, here I actually slowed up the video a little bit uh, so we don't have to wait, uh, but you basically don't need to do anything. Uh, it really just writes that into the internal flash memory. So it's not just in RAM, it's really uh, programmed. There's no SD card required or anything uh, to get the, the system uh, started. So it tells you every, everything is, is gone okay. 
and you can reboot the power off uh, and, and I reboot the, the system here. Uh, so the, the first image here is, uh, is Yocto based Angstrom uh, distribution. And for here, the first version, we just use a common line image. Uh, we normally also will uh, provide one uh, with a desktop environment, uh, but here, I mean, this is really the first the, the first version you see. It's a, it's a common line a Linux image, and it's uh, it's really booting up here. You can see Angstrom uh, booting. Uh, to to prove that it's really in the flash memory and not just in RAM, uh, I will short power cycle. Really remove the power. Uh, put it on again. So it's. Uh, you, you can see the Linux is still there, uh, so I should boot up. Uh, also, the boot time here is not uh, super fast. Uh, of course, it's not the fastest module. Actually, it was the uh, the 528 megahertz uh, module, so it's the low end module. Um, but if you're really interested in in fast boot, uh, Tordex is quite famous, and on the IMX6, we can boot the a, a 3D Qt application in 1.22 seconds. Uh, if if that's uh, important for you. So let's go back. Yeah, so that would already uh, conclude that. And we really now have time uh, for Q&A. Uh, so please use the question uh, functionality uh, on your side panel uh, to ask me or Mario a question. And I will uh, read the questions and then me or uh, uh, Mario will, will answer them. Uh, OK, so the first question uh, we have here is, uh, how how your product is different from a Raspberry Pi. Um, so one thing is really that our product is, our Colibri module is really designed for industrial medical uh, devices. So high reliability, also the flash memory we use is like single level flash. It's a little bit more expensive, but really reliable. Uh, on that, so reliability and so on, that's, that's kind of the key. So most of our products are used in uh, applications. So where uh, a failure is, is a major pain, so it's major cost. So normally if our system fails, for example, in industrial automation, the, the whole automation line stays still. So the cost of that is so high that, that even our module, even if it's a little bit higher, uh, price and a Raspberry Pi, it normally it's worse for the, for the additional uh, reliability. Uh, maybe I actually also give that questions to, uh, to Mario, how you differentiate the, the SOC itself uh, different than, for example, what's on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, thanks, Daniel. I, I think for the most part, what, what we've seen is uh, uh, kind of touching on what you mentioned, um, the Raspberry Pi, we don't really see it in uh, production type environments. and. And that's where uh, partners like yourself and, and other uh, embedded board systems really come in hand where customers are looking, you know, for a, a quick path to getting into production quickly, right? And, and I would say that's the, the biggest differentiator is that from a production or going, to, going into production standpoint, I, I don't, we don't really see Raspberry Pi being used in that, that way. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. Uh, so next question. Uh, does Toradex Bluetooth support Bluetooth mesh? At the moment, not. Actually, the hardware we use, it is, uh, it would support it. So hard is everything ready, but uh, the driver we use and the commitment we have so far uh, from Marvel, they, they don't officially support that. So at the moment, that's no. If it's a high requirement, let us know and we can dig into that. Uh, so it, it should be um, um, a software, but at the moment we, we don't promote a Bluetooth mesh. Uh, does this SOM support QNX or VEX works? Uh, at the moment we don't have it ready, but we have a very close collaboration with, with QNX. Actually the last webinar we did is a QNX and for our IMX7 and IMX6 uh, SOMs we have QNX ready and it should also be available as soon via Toradex Easy installer. At the moment you have to go to QNX and download an image for our uh, uh, module. Uh, we we currently discussing if you also want to bring it to the ULL but also here the same. Uh, let us know if you feel you want to have QNX on the ULL. Uh, at the moment if you're in a hurry and just want to try it out would recommend the IMX7 uh, which is kind of the, the closest. 
Uh, then what's the specification of the Bluetooth uh, chip? I, I think already kind of mentioned it in the presentation, it's Bluetooth uh, 4.2. And I think a little bit more detail, uh, I, I, I can do that uh, offline. How IoT works can be done uh, with your device. Uh, not sure what IoT works means. I mean, IoT application, Internet of Things or Industrial internet of things uh, it's definitely very common uh, i mean just from what i see in, in the field is many of the toradex uh, use cases where, where we are uh, used uh, they have a main other uh, application so we have a lot of medical devices which what uh, they need to do blood analysis for example or a patient monitoring system uh, or you know industrial automation robotic control uh, it's very common so that's the main functionality but you want to provide this information back uh, to your organization to do data mining, to optimize your processes and so on. So many times it's this kind of add-on feature we do uh, and uh, definitely you can do that with our module. We also have most modules are sure IoT certified uh, with Microsoft, the ULL not yet, but uh, I'm sure we're going to do that. Uh, add to so it's also easy to to connect it to to Azure, but also you can use AWS or, or other um, cloud. And then the other thing we see is that it's kind of a, a, a gateway, so that it's the hub which controls other sensors, especially with Bluetooth. You can have a lot of Bluetooth uh, sensors, for example, connecting to the to ULL module, and then you do and you do the managing that you use that to do updates on the Bluetooth devices. So you, you, used to collect data, maybe already do some pre-processing, uh, like edge uh, processing and, and, and so on. Uh, is it suitable for CADA? Uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, visualization, industrial automation, that's, uh, that's common. We also have some partners, so for example, Indusoft, I think they're probably not listed on our website yet, but we, we work with them in, in the background to make that smooth as a lot of uh, people using that and then of course also codices uh, has visualization it's a remote visualization uh, that's used by a lot of uh, common uh, people uh, it is available on amazon india and uh, no uh, as mentioned we don't really work with this distributor and that also doesn't include uh, amazon but uh, we have in india offices in, in in many of the major cities so uh, you can order it online or you just can call call them up and they can uh, hook you up with, with some devices how does the um, power consumption compare to the vf50 uh, honestly we didn't measure that yet uh, in enough detail uh, to be to really uh, fully answer that but it's really optimized for low power it also uh, the, the a7 is definitely more efficient than A9 and we need to compare it with A5 on the on the VF50. Uh, but it also depends really on your use case. So it really depends on how, if you can go suspend or if your uh, power consumption mostly lies because you have to process a lot of data and you have a lot of dynamic power. Uh, we also uh, support suspend to RAM, uh, so that's one, or even because of our fast boot capabilities on some of our modules, uh, you sometimes even can totally switch off the module and then you're back in less than a second in some cases, or, or at least less than two seconds. And so that allows also new use cases. So we have customer that did like industrial PDA and in instead of putting them into suspend and then the battery was done when it lies on the shelf for a couple of days they uh, they went to uh, fully switched it off uh, does your some receive any safety or financial certification a uh, pre-certification uh, for uh, a pci for pci we didn't do any certification by ourselves. I know that the customer using it in, in payment system. Uh, I mean, the URL is too new, so I, I don't think, but I know with uh, some of our hybrid based uh, modules, they have some safety feature, but it wasn't uh, pre certified. Uh, about safety certification, also, we didn't do anything uh, so far. Uh, however, especially on the IMX8 line, this is actually a focus, and we're really looking into that. Uh, how we can make it easier for our customer to get safety uh, certification. Also, NXP has a, I think, a program called Safe uh, Azure, which helps 
uh, customer and partners to easier uh, access the safety uh, certification. You probably still have to do it by yourself, but uh, we, we want to help you. Uh, also, uh, something Tordex does is, I mean, we do a lot of VMI testing and uh, vibration testing and so on, so we can give you this information. So this is also makes it easier to pass some of the certifications. Um, just short checking with Mario. I, I mean, do you want to say something about the, the safety certification? Uh, maybe for, for people who want to use just SOC? Um, yeah, I, mean, I would say in terms of the, the point of sale uh, type of certifications, we do have several customers using the iDotomx6 UL in uh, point of sale applications and obviously a past certification. There is some pre-certification doc that we have done. And if you're interested in that, you can always reach out to me. My email contact is right there on, on the slide and, and I can put you in touch with our point of sale solutions team and they can help you with any type of certification that you might need. Okay, thank, thanks a lot. So here, question about uh, Qt uh, device creation, if, if you're gonna do that. Uh, uh, yeah, so most of our other uh, modules, they are uh, integrated with, with Qt device uh, creation and, and tool. Um, we plan to do that too with the ULL. It should be available with the next Qt release. Uh, we also plan to really have that in a Toradex Ease installer. So instead of uh, creating an SD card and connect it with the module, which is already fairly simple, and now not even the SD card is uh, required uh, anymore. I think we covered all the questions. We give you a few minutes more if you have uh, questions or you come up with something, uh, uh, please add it. I also really like to thank Mario for doing that, that webinar uh, with us. It was nice uh, working to you with you. Thank you, Daniel. And, and thanks everyone for uh, joining as well. And I, for one, am interested in uh, seeing uh, all the different applications that, that you guys uh, end up using the system on module in. Thank you. Yeah, also from my side, uh, thanks all of you for joining the webinar. And if you have more questions or we forgot to cover something, uh, you want to try it out, uh, feel free also to reach uh, out to me. You can see my contact details there. Or, of course, any other Toradex uh, office around the world. Uh, they have the chip. Uh, they're ready to, to help and answer your questions. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye.